From the Bar Minister Today Newsroom, this is your evening news update for Wednesday, May 18. Just under two weeks before the start of the hurricane season, the island's Met officials urged citizens to prepare for an active season. According to Deputy Director of the Barbados Meteorological Services, Brian Marie, early predictions from the Colorado State University suggest the June 1 to November 30 season will be on par with last year's. He was speaking today at a media sensitization campaign launch for the hurricane season. According to the latest predictions, we are expecting 19 named storms, nine of which will become hurricanes. And of those nine hurricanes, four are predicted to be Category 3 or higher. Now, it will not tell you when those Category 3 will form. They can form at any time, whether it is in June or November. And they can form at any part, any part of the Atlantic Ocean or in the Caribbean Sea. You will expect more thunderstorms, more frequent rain events like tropical waves. You probably get a few more disturbances and wind events. That's what being active is all about. And the reason being is that you have a La Nina event coming on. And what that does is that the winds above the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean are very light. And because of that, then that gives any disturbance a better chance to form. Meanwhile, the Department of Emergency Management has teamed up with local media to ensure Barbadians are fully informed this season. Director of the DEM, Kerry Hines, said it's critical the public has accurate information in the event of hazards. It is important that within such a context, we communicate hazard, risk and vulnerability information and knowledge to the public. In today's world, we have many conduits and platforms by which we can share valuable information in, way, in ways which caters to many segments or groups in the population. As we brace ourselves for what is predicted to be another active hurricane season, this committee thought it prudent and beneficial to harness the Respond the resources of the emergency management, information, and media communities to ensure that the public has the most up-to-date, reliable, and accurate information that is required to make the best informed decisions on how to protect, protect themselves, family, property, and communities. Major changes are coming to the public service. In fact, Prime Minister Mayor Motley says improvements will be made as early as next week to address inefficiencies across government departments. She is sure that complaints over the years have not gone unnoticed. It's one thing to manage, and we've got to manage. But if we become so consumed with management, we can forget to reform. We cannot have a 20th century analog government in a 21st digital century. Okay? And therefore, I've taken some decisions. I've spoken to the head of the public service. As of next week, there are going to be two PSs dealing with two different things that are intended to streamline and bring about efficiency. And then there's another section that's literally dealing with coming out. I've promised the country we are going to look at all of those human resource issues in the public service that have remained unresolved. And therefore, we're going to have a dedicated framework both for regrading for the issue of regrading, which is still with the best will in the world, likely to take about 18 months to two years, because you're going through thousands of posts. But secondly, we need to establish the Public Service Appeal Board. We need to ensure that the flexi time, which we used good during COVID, but we need now to use it in a non-shutdown environment so that everybody understands how it can work. And then we need Lou days. This notion that you... If you want a day off, you got to go and tell somebody you're sick or take a vacation day is foolishness. In other organizations, you can take up to five loo days. In other words, I could take five days. It's my birthday. I want a day off. I'll take it back and give it back to you another day. So that you can make those flexible arrangements instead of making big adults feel as though their children are criminals. The backlog of an excess of 25,000 housing applications at the National Housing Corporation is slated to be addressed in a week's time. The assurance from Minister of Housing, Lands and Maintenance, Dwight Sutherland, as he spoke in St. Joseph on Tuesday during the start of an informal series of talks with citizens entitled Parish Speaks. 
asked by a resident about the long wait for responses from the NHC after submitting applications, Sutherland acknowledged that the current situation is untenable. What we're doing, we have a project, we have a team, and I'm proud to report that we have started a project. And I said to the Prime Minister, within a week time, we will be addressing that backlog. And let me say how we will address it. The Prime Minister has said to me, we're not just going to tell the public we are going to address it. How are we going to address it? We will categorize persons in the income brackets. Those who are unemployed, those persons who are earning between 1,000 to 2,000 net income, those between 2,000 to 4,000 net income, and those above. The vulnerable, those persons who are earning below the threshold, we'll offer to you right to own. And that is why we are pushing the envelope, and that's why we call it the silent housing revolution. Because why? When we build 20,000 houses, those 25,000 applicants, let's say 80% of those, have the opportunity to own, own their own home in whatever bracket you fall within. So within a week time, we'll have that project completed, and a paper will go to cabinet offering housing solutions in the various categories and we will deliberate on it as a cabinet and we'll come back to you. Preparations are in progress to ensure the success of AgroFest 2022. When a Barbados Today team visited Queen's Park today, stalls were being erected with chairman of the festival and chief executive officer of the Barbados Agricultural Society, James Paul, overseeing the process. We are proceeded now with the erection of the stalls um, and Hopefully we should get to that within another two or three days. After we finish that, of course, it's just a question of putting in the utilities, water, electricity has to go in. Um, and of course, too, we have to put, the, put in the, the covering for the animals when they, when they come in. So we, we started moving along, um, you know, in a very safe way. So hopefully we should be able to, um, by the end of the week, have most of the work completed so that now Next week, we focus on trying to do the dry runs. In the latest COVID-19 update, Barbados recorded 403 new COVID-19 cases, 168 males and 235 females, from the 1,564 tests conducted on Tuesday by the Best Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases consisted of 116 persons under the age of 18 and 287 who were 18 years and older. There were 94 people in isolation facilities, while 3,955 were in home isolation. A 76-year-old unvaccinated man died as a result of the virus on Tuesday. The COVID-19-related death toll stands at 435. There's regional and international news after this short break. New Brunswick sardine fillets, boneless, ready to eat. Perfect, son. Hold on, hold on, one more. It is sardine. Well, let's see. And available in bold new flavors. Brunswick sardine fillets are giving sardines a new vibe. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional news, Cuba is facing its worst economic crisis in 30 years. U.S. sanctions and the COVID-19 pandemic have crippled the tourism sector and thousands of Cubans are leaving the island in search of a better life. 55-year-old Laudelina Sulueta is returning home empty-handed after spending hours in a queue to buy butter. Life is a struggle, she says, especially since her daughter migrated to Spain, leaving her to care for her grandchildren on her monthly minimum wage, worth $20 at the black market rate. Ow. She shows us her refrigerator, full, mostly of water. I have four children to feed. I have no choice but to go on the street to sell this and that. 
She explains that she can buy 10 packs of cigarettes for 200 pesos on her ration card and sell each one for 150 on the flourishing informal market. Long lines for everything from food to fuel reveal an economy in distress. People's tempers are short from queuing most of the day, in this case for two bottles of oil. Scarce items are sold with a ration card, but most things are no longer subsidized. I've been here since 5 a.m. and I've got number 117. See? It's now 10 a.m. and there are at least 800 people in line hoping to buy chicken. Cuba's cash-starved economy is collapsing under the weight of harsh economic sanctions imposed by Washington and a pandemic that's paralyzed tourism, Cuba's economic engine. All this aggravated by three-digit inflation, sparked by a long-overdue monetary reform. We were obliged to devaluate our currency by 2,300 percent, one of the biggest devaluations ever seen in the region. On the international front, Sri Lanka's government urged citizens not to line up at petrol stations because they have run dry. The government is struggling to pay for new supplies and other essential goods, and the Prime Minister warns difficult months are ahead. Angry, frustrated and helpless, Sri Lankans have had to queue up for most essentials in recent weeks. Today they were told there's no more petrol left. I came at 8 o'clock this morning, but when I got close they said the petrol was gone. I don't even have enough to go home. It's the poorest people that are the worst affected. We can't cope. A massive tax cut, the 2019 Easter bombings targeting hotels and churches and the pandemic have sharply affected government revenue. This, together with unsustainable debt, mismanagement and corruption, made it difficult for Sri Lanka to face the economic problems in recent months. Foreign reserves have fallen to near zero and the government can't pay for basic essentials. This included fuel from a tanker anchored off Colombo port for the past 45 days. The government owes $735 million on earlier fuel supplies. Petrol Sandaha. Don't queue up for petrol because we are working with very limited stocks, which are being allocated to essential services like ambulances. It will be Saturday or Sunday before supplies are available. Sri Lanka is facing its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. Shortages have brought ordinary Sri Lankans to the streets, demanding the president Gotabe Rajapaksa's resignation. He says he won't resign and has appointed a new prime minister, Ranil Vikramasinghe. Voted out of parliament at the last election, he has a lot to prove. You and I will have to deal with the most difficult times in our lives over the next few months. Everyone will have to face this with commitment. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.